Do you know why books are so great? They're one of the oldest forms of recording and eventually passing on knowledge to future generations, sometimes over the course of millennia. Modern philosopher Naval Ravikant makes the point that the older the solution to a problem is, the more trustworthy it has become, as it stood the test of time. And so in this video I want to show you 8 essential books that will vastly improve the quality of your life in a myriad of ways. Whether that's through eating a healthier diet, living longer, becoming richer in friendships, relationships or money, or learning from the greatest of their craft, from billionaires to world-class performers. There's something in here for everyone, so let's go. This book has made a lot of buzz in Germany when it released about three years ago. And as there is now an English translation available, I can finally talk about it. The book's author, Bas Kast, used to live a busy life like the most of us do nowadays. Not always finding the time to eat properly and look after himself, he had to pay the price one day when he had a heart attack whilst going out for a run. He made it out alive, but just having had a little son and being in his very early 40s, he decided that he had to radically change his diet and lifestyle what he wanted to see his son growing up. For months, he read through all available studies covering nutrition in all of its forms, examined them critically and scientifically, and eventually developed a 12-point plan as to what makes up a healthy diet based on modern science. The result of his work can be seen here, in his book The Diet Compass. This book understands itself as some sort of meta-analysis of a wide range of scientific studies relating to diet and nutrition, but summarized and packaged in a very digestible, excuse the pun, form factor. The book starts off by laying the groundwork for a basic understanding of the building blocks of our food. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, terms you've definitely heard before, but goes slightly deeper where necessary. The author often cites the studies he's referring to, but then rewords the findings in a way that they become easily comprehensible for the layman reader. And he examines each study he relies upon critically, pointing out when a study has been sponsored by a certain group with a heavy interest in a certain outcome, for example. Going from the broad building blocks of our food, he then narrows the narrative down to the micro-elements like vitamins and minerals, and tops it all off by answering detailed questions such as how much coffee should you consume, is milk really healthy for you, and what amount of alcohol is, if so, still okay. As someone who's always had a deep interest in nutrition, this book has become somewhat of my go-to bible for the topic. Some of the conclusions the author draws in the end are a bit of a no-brainer, as we all know that fast food, for example, is really bad for you. But the diet compass still teaches you how bad or how good a certain food will be and puts it all into context and perspective. So no matter whether you're already living a healthy lifestyle and are just looking for endorsement, or you're looking for a good starting point, you will definitely find some interesting takeaways in this book. I personally just love the scientific evaluation of the topic mixed with an easy-to-understand language and the motivation it leaves behind in the reader to actually make some changes. If you're looking for more books in the same vein, there were two runner-ups which I almost considered to choose instead of The Diet Compass and wanted to briefly mention here. The first book is How Not to Die by Michael Greger and then secondly Genius Foods by Max Lugavere, who also has a brilliant podcast about all things nutrition and diet by the way. Both of these also broadly cover what makes up a healthy diet and as the field of nutrition is so vast and can sometimes be conflicting in its findings, it's always sensible to read about the same topic from different angles and make up your own mind in the end. I will put links for all books I mentioned in this video in the description below for you. If you purchase a book through my links, it won't cost you a penny more, but I get a small kickback which in turn helps me financing this channel. So thank you in advance for your support. Living a healthy lifestyle has for most people two purposes, to avoid illness and to prolong one's life as a whole. This book then focuses mainly on the latter reason and is written by the leading expert in the field. Dr. Walter Longo, an Italian-American biogenerator biogener Biogenerotol, an Italian-American scientist who devoted his academic life to the research of longevity. Leading the Longevity Institute at the University of Southern California and his Biology of Aging program, Longo has made some huge early discoveries of the dietary factors that positively influence longevity the most. He has been guest on multiple podcasts and gave a TED talk five years ago, which has since been viewed more than 1.7 million times. I mean, that's nothing. That's nothing compared to my own numbers. The Longevity Diet is not only an amazing follow-up read to the book I mentioned before, but even breaks with some commonly understood principles of nutrition that seem to have to be rewritten by the new scientific evidence brought up in this book. For years, and especially in the bodybuilding and fitness industry, proteins have been hailed as the most essential macronutrient. And whilst it still stands true that you need a certain amount of protein to build up your muscles, Longo's studies have shown that a low-protein diet might be the biggest benefiting factor in prolonging your life at its tail end. In the book he goes into much more detail as to why that is and also talks about the importance of caloric restriction for longevity, more commonly referred to as intermittent fasting. Both discoveries led me to make some substantial changes in my everyday life. From cutting down the consumption of protein, especially that of animal protein, up to picking up intermittent fasting and making it a daily habit since early 2020. And I think for 52 I look quite young still. As with most books on this list, this one too can only lay the groundwork and encourage you to dig deeper should a matter be of interest to you. But as an expanded read on the topic of nutrition as a whole, this book raises some 
really interesting points from the edges of scientific discoveries on longevity. Should you want to go even deeper into the matter and follow up on Longo's findings, I can recommend Lifespan to you, a book by Dr. David Sinclair on why we age and why we don't have to, which goes even more in-depth in the science and backgrounds of the aging process as a whole. And Dr. Sinclair is a professor for genetics at Harvard Medical School, so the man too knows what he's talking about. This book is the perfect starting point if you're interested in financial investing, which for most people is still a topic too vast and too complex to even bother with. In the end, everyone can make their own decisions of what to do with their money if they're in excess of it. But I'm talking from my own experience when I'm saying that it has never been easier to become financially literate and start with investing as it is today. And also rarely more important to do so in my own opinion. But neither do I want to promote nor give away any form of concrete financial advice here. But after having substantially read up on the topic and educated myself about it for years, it's my belief that there's no way around financial investing Investing, especially for my generation and the ones thereafter. And after years of research on the matter, How to Own the World is still my most recommended book on the topic, as it lays the perfect groundwork for everything to come. Its author, Andrew Craig, is a financial strategist who worked in the markets for over 20 years and explains in very plain English why you should invest your money and how to actually and practically go about it. This book is so suitable for beginners because he really uses an easy to understand language, explains every bit of financial lingo and underlines his arguments with graphics and charts where necessary. His reasons for why you should start investing are very very compelling, especially in current times with inflation running into the double digits. And his approach in the end is scientifically proven to work over decades. As a fellow Brit, Andrew Craig wrote this book from a British perspective. He's mainly using the pound as his go-to currency and talks about British pension schemes and types of investment accounts. Whereas it's thereby mostly suited to British readers, his takeaways and his general approach is definitely viable and transferable for all international readers as well. The book is designed to leave you with a more or less concrete investment strategy in the end, and it's giving you some good information of how and where to actually get started. If you want to dig even deeper and approach the next level of financial investing, I can recommend you to have a look at The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham and One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. Both are somewhat older, both the books and their authors, but thereby stood the test of time the most, as Naval Ravikant would say. Staying in the broad world of finance and business, but focusing more on the letter, The Millionaire Fastline is one of my favorite non-fiction books of all time, as talked about in my review of it over here in this video. Author MJ DeMarco is a self-made millionaire who built up several successful businesses throughout his entrepreneurial life and lays out the groundwork for his repeated success in this book. He explains why you most likely will never become rich by selling your time alone and then explains how to go about leveraging your workforce in order to leverage your income in return. He gives concrete strategies of how to exit the red race for good and build your own business, thereby becoming your own boss in return, claiming back control over your life and finances. Knowing how to build a business from scratch might not initially improve your quality of life. But I think this book can jog everyone's brain in a good and healthy way nevertheless, forcing you to re-evaluate the life and career decisions you've made up to this point. And therefore, it's quite an eye-opening read in many ways, but especially for people who see themselves as being trapped in their jobs. He basically paints the picture of three lanes, which are metaphors for different ways of living life. There's the sidewalk, the slow lane, and the fast lane. If you're walking on the sidewalk, you're basically selling your time to employer for money, living paycheck to paycheck on a low income or a minimum wage job, which doesn't allow for any savings. If you're driving on the slow lane, you still sell your time for money, but you make enough to put some of your income into a savings account, invest it into a diversified index fund, and hopefully, thanks to the compound effect, become a millionaire by age of 75. If, however, you want to drive on the fast lane, you need to decouple your income from your time, use the leverage of scale to your advantage, and in the process, exit the red race for good. I really like how frank and straightforward the author is with the reader, especially when he talks about how or why so many people struggle to become financially independent or even build up a small amount of wealth in the first place, despite sometimes working multiple jobs at once. I think he brings up some harsh truths about modern work environments and work culture that a lot of people tend to ignore and then moan about in the end. In some aspects, he even brings up an interesting antithesis to the book I mentioned before, as MJ DeMarco has some good arguments for why you should not invest your money in the stock market. And so reading The Millionaire Fast Lane after How to Own the World is like two pieces of a puzzle coming together in some way, highlighting both sides of the argument for you to make up your own mind in the end. Overall, this is a brilliant book, especially tailored to people who ever pondered about building your own business or recently made a jump and need to hear some words of encouragement to keep going. But even if you chose a more secure full-time employment on purpose, I think it's still good to hear about the what ifs and know what to go should you want to create a side income in the future or to double check your life choices as to whether they still stand the test of time. A runner-up and probably more well-known book of the same vein is The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, which was the first bestseller that talked about the same concepts MJ DeMarco touches upon here. Both are brilliant books, but I wanted to give this one the limelight as it's just a bit lesser known and a 
more updated, more concrete version of Tim Ferriss' work. I guess if you liked one or the other, you will also most likely enjoy their spiritual sibling. Most people will know Mark Manson from his bestseller, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. But much lesser known is this book he first published in 2011, focused on the act of attracting and seducing potential partners, mostly women in this case. Released at a time at which the pickup artist movement gained momentum, Models was a refreshing opposite take on the matter. Whereas pickup artists held a very misogynistic worldview and saw the act of approaching women as a pure numbers game based on memorized pickup lines, models promoted a mindset of vulnerability, honesty, and self worth without lying and without trying to manipulate others. In my review of the book, which you can watch over here, I said that even though Models is clearly tailored towards and written for heteronormative men, already in a prologue the author explains how he intended the book to be more inclusive of all forms of gender identity. It's still predominantly written from the perspective of a traditional straight cis man in search for a female partner, but the takeaways and underlying principles do work for all gender identities and sexual orientations if you ask me. As with most books on this list, this one too starts at zero and it takes you by the hand to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to gain more self-worth, work on your looks, prime your mindset and ultimately have the courage to approach people in public settings, no matter your underlying intentions of doing so. Manson uses a clear and easy to understand language. He's very honest with the reader and doesn't try to sell you bullshit that he doesn't believe in or that never worked for him. He also brings in a surprisingly on-point and in-depth psychological layer or examination of the intricate web of human interactions, especially when it comes to the question of what makes people attractive or unattractive. Manson says that the biggest factor in your mindset that will make you unattractive to others is neediness and spends a good amount of time in the book to explain his point and to share a strategy of how not to come across as needy anymore. Being not a single sentence so long, this book gets its message across as clearly and sharply as it can. And I quite like and appreciate that this message is built on principles that I can stand behind, honesty and vulnerability. As mentioned in my review, the mindset Manson tries to cultivate here is not only handy in approach of finding potential partners, but also for most other social settings, whether that's in a business or more in a casual sense. I think the approach talked about in the book would work in a business meeting as well as on a date. So Models is a really good starting point for anyone who struggled with finding a partner or wants to work on their social skills as a whole. If you then want to continue reading on the matter, Manson recommends No More Mr. Nice Guy by Robert A. Glover. A book for which its title already gives away its core content, I guess. A guide to let go of the nice guy image, which, if you've fallen into this image before, might have gotten you friend zoned more often than not in the past. If so, this is also a book for you. This is the oldest book on this list, but its principles and techniques stood the test of time the most, therefore. How to Win Friends and Influence People is a guide for exactly what the title suggests. A step-by-step -step guide on how to come across as more likable and sociable to other people. You can watch my critical review of the book over here, and I stand by what I said there. This book is filled with outdated examples that you will have to mentally translate into modern times, but the underlying techniques and principles do hold up really well, as they've been ingrained in human culture and interactions since the dawn of time. There's a common saying that goes something like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It implies that we as humans need each other, that we are designed to collaborate with each other to build something greater than we could achieve ourselves. In his book Humankind, author Rutger Brackman makes the point that the biggest difference between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens was that the latter was capable of collaboration, of joining mental and physical forces in order to succeed over their natural enemies. They created tightly knit communities, they helped each other out and educated one another on the newest hunting techniques or predator territories. They constantly got together to eat party, sing and marry people from other groups. So despite being physically stronger and having larger brains than Homo sapiens, Neanderthals eventually vanished, as they lacked the communal aspect in their social lives and were therefore outlived by Homo sapiens. Collaboration and interactions with other human beings has therefore been ingrained in our beings and our psyche for millennia. You will only thrive and be successful in life if people are happy to cooperate with you, to work with you, in short, to be around you. Hence why I see How to Win Friends and Influence People as one of the most important books on this list. I'm sure that many of you are nice people and have little to no problem bonding with others. But have you ever wondered what makes you so likable? I guess even if you have a natural ability to bond with others, it's really handy to put into words as to why that is. It will not only teach you a lot about yourself, but it will also let you gain new perspectives as to what could still be improved or what will work in new scenarios going forwards. There's a reason why How to Win Friends and Influence People is such a classic of non-fiction literature. Because despite its outdatedness in some aspects, the subtle cues we humans give each other in our interactions have been the same across time, whether in 1936 when the book was first published or in 2022 when I'm recording this video. 
And if you're looking for more in the same vein, you might also be interested in Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, which hits very similar notes but in a more up-to-date manner. Or to think a bit more outside of the box, have a look at Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. People thrive on stories, they love being told a good tale. And this book wants to teach you how to frame and tell enticing stories. So it goes a bit above and beyond the concept of talking to strangers, but aims more at holding their attentions, which is also a very useful life skill as everyone loves to hear a well-told story. I've mentioned the 4-hour walk week before, which if you are in the self-development and productivity bubble, might be nothing new to you. Chances are you even a fan of Tim Ferriss' podcast that has been going strong for more than 8 years now. This book of his is a bit lesser known, but has been one of my favorite reads of 2020 back when I first discovered it. Tools of Titans is a summary of the best tips, tricks and tactics that Tim's podcast guests have given him over all of these years. From top athletes to billionaires to various world-class performers, they give away their tools of the trade, their secret techniques and useful tactics which elevated them into the top tier of their craft. You will learn about Sam Harris' favorite meditation technique, have Tony Robbins share his best investment advice with you, or hear Jamie Foxx talk about his best workout routine and talk about behind the scenes stories from all his many years on various film sets. Wim Hof goes on to share his secret breathing techniques, which let him survive in icy climates for days on end. You will learn about the worth of just a thousand true fans by Sam Durethi, or be taught how to ask the right questions by Malcolm Gladwell. And these are just a very few examples of the myriad of tactics and tips that are given in this book. I'm sure that not all of you want to be world-class performers, but it's still super motivating to hear these people talk so passionately about their craft and unique abilities. At over 700 pages and with having interviewed more than 200 performers at the time of writing the book, this is almost like the bible for self-development, with takeaways for whoever is reading it, as the life advice given here is just so varied and multifaceted. And if you want to follow up read after Tools of Titans, oh boy do I have a tip for you. There is a successor called Tribes of Mentors, which elevates on the first book's concept by giving more of a spiritual guide. Less focused on purely practical tips for the perfect workout for example, this one goes more in-depth about the right mindset and perspectives to tackle life. Both books combined are an insanely dense collection of the best giveaways from the best performers of their crafts. And if you want to go even further, there's also this hidden gem. I've mentioned the guy many times before. The Almanac of Naval Ravikant is basically a Tools of Titans tailored around just one guy. Author Eric Jorgensen sat down and combed through hours of interview material and thousands of tweets to give an ultimate summary of the best life advice that modern philosopher and entrepreneur Naval Ravikant has given over the years. Naval is capable of breaking down complex processes into simple phrases that always get to the core of the issue and are in no way sugar-coated. He will tell you in a few simple steps how to build wealth, he will educate you about the importance of good judgments in life and leave you with an intrinsic motivation to go out there and tackle life front on. Eric Jorgensen did a fantastic job in categorizing Naval's takeaways into chapters such as building wealth, building judgment, learning happiness, saving yourself or philosophy. And because Naval's takeaways are always so lean and to the point, you will have an easy time internalizing them and applying them to your own life. And the best part is that this almanac is free to download. I've put a link for it and all the other books mentioned in this video in the description below. Obviously, this list is not complete. There might be a part two in the future, so I would love to hear your recommendations down in the comments below. For tips on how to read more in general and create a constant reading habit, check out my video over here. Thank you and see you next time. Ciao.